I'm Dean Newland, President, CEO, Founder of Mission Facilitators International. By now, you probably are looking at the cover of your Social Styles Agility Report, and I want to give you some brief information about how to read it, and more importantly, what do you do from here? First, what makes this unique from all the other types of assessments on the market? There are three things. One, this is really about measuring a person's preference and why that's important is especially during times of stress. We don't necessarily play to our strengths, although we would like to. We often play to our preference. So it's important to know what your preference is, especially when it comes to your times of stress. Number two, as the name indicates, this is really all about your agility. While a lot of different reports out there measure where you are as a personality or as a person's strengths, we really want to focus more about now that you know that, what do you do from here? How are you agile in terms of connecting with people who are different than yourself? And then lastly, this is a simple report and assessment, and you will be able to understand another person's style without them having to go through their own assessment process. Whereas other very, very popular assessments out there, the only way you'll know what another person's score is, is by having them do it themselves. This is not the case. So let's move right on. The pages that follow, some of them I'm going to skip through and some of them I'm going to get dive into a little bit more. Uh, this first one just kind of gives you a quick background in terms of where the assessment came from and the fact that you can also use this as a 360 whereby you would get other people to participate in this to be able to assess you, which is useful in some cases. I'd like for you to also think about before we get too far into this is that when it comes to communication, what we're trying to convey obviously is content, certain amount of information. However, the style by which you present that content is going to be the most important part of a person's assessment as to whether or not they want to hear your content. I liken this to giving somebody a Christmas gift. You may have the perfect gift, the content, however, the style, the box, the, the ribbing, the paper, all of that might somehow rub that person the wrong way. And since we're so multitasked, challenged and, and attention deficit because we are being so pushed in so many different directions, we're very quick to judge what people are saying without necessarily getting past the style. So therefore, it becomes really important that if we want somebody to really pay attention to what we're saying, we need to take into account how we deliver that message. And that's what this is really all about. So here is a particular page I want you to look at, the XY axis graph. You will see that this is also something that you have in front of you. Those of us who are further north in their style uh, plots are going to be more apt to be poker faced, very monotone in their voice, more focused on facts and information and getting things done and less about uh, relationships. Further to the south, this is more about the opposite, relationships, feelings, uh, more approachable, more disarming, uh, more animated. The east and west, that X axis is really what we call the responsiveness or the assertiveness line. And those of us to the left are slower pace. We like facts and information. We like guarantees and assurances, whether that be with data or with people. We are more cautious and we want to make sure that we have some sort of clarity. Those of us to the right on that X axis is more opposite, faster pace, big picture. Um, they get bored with the details. They like to start things, not necessarily great at finishing them. And they are more aggressive, more gregarious, more noticeable in many cases. So when you get to this next page, you see the breakdown of the four different styles, the analytical, the driver, the amiable, and expressive. And what we have here is a description of each one of them in the extreme because the far further corners is really what we're talking about. Now, most of the population is not in those corners, but it's important to know what the major influence is of a particular person. So each of these styles have a weakness, a need, 
a strength and what we call a stress response. So for the analytical, the main need is to be right. They like facts and information. That's their strength and their weaknesses around making decisions because they're afraid that the decision they may make could be the wrong one. So they're risk averse. When they really get stressed out, they become somewhat of a an, uh, very much analysis paralysis. They avoid, they hide behind details. So these people, when they're in their hardcore double-dipped analytical behavior are not necessarily going to feel comfortable talking about something that has never been done before. They want to have guarantees and they want to make sure that it makes sense. These people like to take their time when making decisions. They like to uh, go over all of the data and the information. So don't feel put off if they need to understand it to the degree that you do. They might still trust you. They just want to make sure they trust the information. Moving to the right, now we're still moving toward a little bit faster pace individual, but still focused on the um, getting things done uh, personality on that Y axis that we talked about before. The driver is all about one, uh, to get results, uh, and that's what they are focused on. They love, love to check off lists and see things happen, usually on a very short-term, tangible basis. They're not necessarily thinking two or three years out, they're thinking two or three days out. Their strength is around control, so the more they can keep their hands in things, the more they can guarantee that things are going to happen, so they get that immediate response. Their weakness is around listening, because listening ultimately is an act of losing control, because it's a co-creative activity between them and somebody else, where nobody's really guiding the conversation. It's being kind of guided by the collaborative efforts of two people. So because of that, the drivers have a hard time with letting go and letting the process unfold at its own pace. And then the stress response is becoming dictatorial, rewriting the rules, just finally saying enough's enough, I'm going to take over and you're going to do what I say. Now, ironically, with all of these particular uh, weaknesses, if that particular person leans into it, they're actually going to get more of what they want, meaning with the driver, if they got better at listening, they will probably get better results because they're getting more people engaged because people like being listened to. With the analytical, they're probably going to be able to feel more right because they are able to make more decisions. And so the sheer volume of more decisions being made is going to increase that person's ability to be right. So that's where sort of the learning comes into play here is to lean into some of those weaknesses. Continuing on in a counter or I should say clockwise basis, the expressive is now south of the border and they are more focused on relationships than on things, and they're emotion more emotional than they are about um, tactics. And so the expressive is more about the need of getting recognition and approval, and not the kind that you would say is all about ego, of which all of these styles are ego in their basis, but about the fact that they want to be recognized and approved for doing good quality work. These people are purpose-centered. They want to make a difference in the world, and if they don't see any... Uh, response to their efforts, they feel disappointed. They're very good at socializing, so they like to be able to connect with people, and therefore, by having more of those social connections, they have more ability or more opportunity to get that recognition and approval. So these people are very disarming, they're funny, they are great storytellers, they, are, they often are the life of the party, uh, they make good salespeople, etc. Their weaknesses is around checking um, in, uh, data and facts, and that's because they get bored with those minute crossing the I's, dotting the T's activities. And so these people would be best to lean into that a little bit more or to at least find somebody who could do it for them. And then lastly, their stress response is to attack and to protect their self-esteem. You know, they finally have had enough and they just finally lash out. And this is not usually a subtle activity. This is something that people know very clearly that the expressive is upset. Last but not least is our, our friends, the amiables to the far left and bottom. And this person is still about uh, relationships, but they've now moved to a more um, less aggressive uh, personality, more quiet. And so the amiable really needs relationship security. And security is the key word here. They want relationships, much like the expressives do, but they want them to be secure. They don't like the drama. They don't like the conflict in particular. They like the, the harmony of relationships. And so because of that, they develop this great strength called group support. They're great at being team members. They're not necessarily great team players because they don't, or I should say team leaders, because they don't want to necessarily stick their neck out. They don't want to, here comes a weakness, initiate action, because if they, they do, they know that that action is going to obviously 
uh, be met with some pushback by some people. You know, it's the age-old uh, example of a group of people going out to lunch, and they're trying to decide what restaurant to go to. The amiable is not going to say, hey, you guys, I think we should all go out and eat some really hot, spicy Thai. They're not going to do that. They're going to say, whatever you all want to do, I will follow along, and I'm going to be fine, even though they might be lactose intolerant, vegetarian, and, you know, can't eat very many things on most menus. They're going to put their own needs behind the needs of other people, which is one of the weaknesses that they have in such that they go along, they hide disappointment by blaming, and these are the people that might have the hardest time confronting somebody else with a problem. They're more um, having problem with conflict resolution. It's not to say that they can't, it just means that they struggle a little bit more with it. So again, what I'm describing here are the extremes of these four different styles. And as we move on to the next page, you will see that there is opposites here. The opposite of, a, of an analytical is the expressive, and vice versa, the opposite of a driver is the amiable and vice versa. The, now, the hardcore of these opposites would certainly find it difficult to work with their opposite. However, there is great opportunity when you pull together and you uh, create the whole, if you will, but it takes a lot of effort. This page, I'll quickly say, is that most of us find ourselves somewhere in that middle area. There's very few of us, I would say, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent is on the far outlying reaches. We do notice is that when you get a lot of people in the center area there on the bottom of that page, that they get along really well. And there's a certain amount of harmony, but they may not necessarily challenge one another to think outside the box. There could be something what we might call group think. Those of us on the far outlying reaches are more about uh, being uh, more catalysts um, for change. And those are very good things, but it's very difficult at times because of the extreme nature of that particular person's style. Now, again, where you land on any of these things is not the issue. The, really, the issue is, are you able to adjust your style to match that of somebody else? Because they need that in order to see and hear your content. Remember, people want to relate to people's styles, not content, that is similar to their own. So we need to be able to literally be more like somebody else sometimes in order for them and us to have a good conversation. This is just a quick uh, page I want to show you about things to support. We've already somewhat talked about this a little bit, but it gets into a little bit more around how people use time and their approach to decision making. I think that's somewhat self-explanatory. Now, this is an important page I want to share with you because as you take a look at where your particular score is plotted, you will notice that you are in a major box, analytical, driver, expressive, or amiable, but you also notice that the dotted line indicates that there are four boxes within each box. And so now we have a primary, the big box, and a secondary, the small box. So what that means is that we have a strong indication towards one of those four major areas, but the secondary box might actually mellow us out in some ways. There's very few people who are analytical, analytical, or driver, driver, expressive, expressive, and amiable, amiables. So we find ourselves that we have some sort of a combination. The recipe changes a little bit. So from a nomenclature perspective, I should say, or a sequence perspective, we would describe a person's secondary characteristic first and their primary characteristic second. For example, if you're, say, negative 5 plus 2, which would be on that y-axis down and then plus 2 over to the right on the on the x-axis, you would be considered a amiable small box expressive large box, much like if you live in Scottsdale, small, Arizona, large. And that's just one way we can describe it. Now, this page just very briefly kind of gives you some understanding about how you might read your score if, in fact, you were to do a 360 as indicated by the other dots, which is yellow in this case. This is the page that describes the actual assessment that you did when you first did this. So there's nothing new about that. And then this, again, probably just walks you through uh, the X, Y axis again. And then the subsequent pages gives you specifically which um, categories are you, and there's a page that relates to it. For example, this one is talking about the, um, the, the amiable, amiable, the double dipped, whereas this one, you can see the highlighted smaller square, is talking about the analytical amiable. And... This is not to be read 
uh, literally this is more of a reference and I really think that whomever you're working with as a coach should give you some of those finer points. The other thing to notice is that it's all about context. Who are you talking to? What's the situation, etc. And this particular tool can help you specifically read the other person and read the situation and more importantly, how then do you help that conversation by adjusting your style to make it more like that other person or more like that situation. Meaning when I say situation, you could be having a blue sky five year strategic plan and that's really going to require more expressive or driver characteristics. Whereas if we're reviewing the budget from 2019, that's going to require a little bit more of a, um, uh, an analytical perspective. So just match the style to the situation or the person. The rest of it is just going through each one of these in more detail, but certainly the last page here kind of gives you some open-ended questions about how you might be able to move this forward. So in short, or in summary, I should say, this is a style assessment that is talking about your preference, not your talents. And that the reason why that's useful is because it's guides our behavior when it comes to decision-making, communication, and how we deal with stress. And what's more important than anything is not just to know where you land, but know how to adjust your style through your own agility. Thank you very much and have a great time with this assessment.